All right, my friends, um, let's try to get through these and see if we can make them super fast. Um, so, you know, for part A, is, is part A arithmetic? You know, well, to jump from 2 to 10, you'd add 8. To jump from 10 to 18, you'd add 8 again. And to jump from 18 to 26, you'd add 8 again. So I keep just adding the same constant value, so the sucker is arithmetic. And now let's just describe um, how you jump to any nth term. So this could be super fast, but it is. this is some thinking that sounds like it takes a long time, but it doesn't. So how did they get the 10? Well, they took the 2 and they added 1, 8. Well, how did they get the 18? They took the 2 and they added 2, 8s. But the 18 is the third term. So you're on the third term, but you've added 2, 8s. Fourth term, added 3, 8s. So how do you get to the nth term? So you just kind of say, like, hey, here's the secret. So to get to the nth term, you start with a 2, and you would have added n minus 1, 8. There you go. I'm not going to bother with what that simplifies to, because I honestly, um, you know, it's easy, and I don't care to. There you go. <laughs> All right, for part B, is part B arithmetic? You know, what are they adding to get from 2 to 1.9? Well, they're adding negative 0.1. And did they do it again? You know, jump to the third term. Sure, they did. Um, so what's the nth term? Well, one way to write the answer would be to say it started at 2, and you just keep adding a bunch of, you know, negative 0.1s, which I think I'm just going to call that subtracting 0.1. And how many 0.1s would you have subtracted to get to any nth term? Well, n minus 1 of them. So there you go. And I hope this makes sense on an organic level, not a just because I told you level. Anyway, so hopefully you've taken the time to think it out and that this feels true. Um, now for part C. Um, if part C was arithmetic, we'd be looking for what they added. And from 5 to 10, they would have added 5. But want want from 10 to 20, they would have added 10. And right there, that means part C is super duper not arithmetic, and we are best to not treat it like it is. So um, there is a pattern, though. It's just not the type of pattern that we've got for parts A and B. It's kind of like this one is of a different, a different clan. Um, so what do you notice uh, that you could do to 5 to 10 that would also work to get from 10 to 20? And I hope that multiplying by 1 half makes sense. Or no, no, that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, multiplying by 2 makes sense, though. Anyway, so they just keep multiplying by 2. So this one's kind of fun. Um, so uh, part C has a pattern, um, but it's just, uh, you know, different from A and B. So let's see. Maybe I'll go back to the T table. So this is the number of term you're on. Um, and then this is how you could get there. So um, let's see. First term. Well, that's just 5. Um, and then to get to the second term, which is 10, what did you do to the 5 to get there? Well, you took the 5 and you multiplied it by 2, right? So you get to the third term, which is 20. How did you get there? Um, well, you took, you could think of it as taking the previous term, which is 5 times 2 and multiplying it by 2. Or you could think of it as taking the first term and multiplying it by 2 times 2, which, by the way, is like 5 times 2 squared. All right, to get to the fourth term, which would have been 40 had it been written, um, that would be 5 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 cubed. Um, so I'm going to go back and put some extra stuff that um, really kind of shows that the pattern that we figured out actually works. So um, to get to any nth term, um, how do you get there? Um, we'll look at the pattern. Look at, you know, look at the, the kind of the stuff. You know, what's staying the same and what's changing and the part that's changing, how does it compare to n as n changes? So the pattern would be take 5, multiply it by 2, um, n minus 1 times. There you go. So a, we would say a sub n is equal to 5 times 2 to the n minus 1, and that is the pattern for part C. And uh, part C is something that you won't see much of in section 8.2 because um, A2 is all about arithmetics, and this one isn't. Um, as a matter of fact, you may have learned previously that multiplying by the same constant value every time, that is a geometric um, sequence. And that's what Section 8.3 will be about. Anyway, I just wanted to throw it in there to kind of caution you against, um, you know, to make sure that you recognize what type of sequence you have before you um, start forcing a certain type of formula or pattern on it. So there you go.
Okay, now for part D, let's talk about just in general, how do arithmetics work? So let's say you have any old first term. Let's just call it a sub one, meaning could have been any number. And then if it's arithmetic, then that means that you keep adding the same constant value. So let's say uh, the second term then, um, here we'll just kind of say the second term would be a sub one plus whatever your common difference is. And then what would a sub three be? Well, it would have been a sub one plus two common differences. And what would a sub four be? Oops, I'm writing this on the wrong spot. Sorry, guys. A sub four would be your first term plus how many common differences to get there? Yeah, three of them. So let's say I wanted to know, how do you get to a sub 27? How would you do that? Well, you would take your first term and you would add how many common differences to get to the 27th term? Well, you added three of them to get to the fourth term and two of them to get to the third term. So you would have added 26 of them to get to the 27th term. So the point is, is making sense of a formula that we're about to give you, um, but I hope you can actually give it to me as opposed to me giving it to you. So what's the formula that you'll always pretty much use to get to the nth term of an arithmetic sequence? So I hope it makes sense at this time that it would be your first term plus how many common differences? Yep, n minus 1. So hopefully that makes so much sense, it's not even funny, because chapter eight, when you get to the end, um, can seem like a big jumble of formulas if they don't make total sense. And so um, if you were able to tell me this before I told you, then that's a very good sign for you and your chapter eight experience. So now let's kind of summarize it here. So the formula for the nth term of specifically an arithmetic sequence is a sub n is equal to your first term plus n minus 1 of whatever your common difference is. There we go. And I am putting a memorization cloud around it, but I really do hope that it's the kind of thing that you kind of have a combination of memorizing it and being able to like think it out and come up with it yourself in those little moments where you forgot it. So, all right, my friends. Now we're going to transition to the part of the lesson where we talk about fun tricks for evaluating um, uh, nth partial sums of arithmetic sequences. And so I'll kind of butt out and let you think about part A. So see if you can figure out what's the sum as i goes from 1 to 100 of i, okay? So uh, yeah, I'm, I was about to give you a hint, but I think I'm just gonna butt out, like I said. Good luck. <laughs>